for us to be together today. And I really want to welcome you to this class. And I appreciate your commitment and your determination to always be part of this growing Bible study class. And I also want to appreciate you for informing others about this class. And if you have not done so, it is not too late. Better late than never. You can reach out to people in your circle of influence and let them know of this Bible study class online. They can get it on Facebook, YouTube, Google Meet, Mixelab, and Telegram, about five platforms. And I believe that they will also thank you for informing them. I want to ask that we bow our heads as we share a word of prayer together. Eternal Father, we thank you again for the great privilege that you have given to us today. Thank you for loving us and unconditionally. Thank you for your hand that is stretched forth towards us to help us. And Lord, we want to ask you to receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. We beg of you today that Jehovah, you will again speak to us. You will bring your word to us very clearly. It will cause us to find understanding of the counsel of your heart as you bring your word to us. We plead with you that all trans be given and hearers of hearing be given to both the speaker and the hearers in the name of Jesus. Let it be, O oh God, that by the time we'll be concluding this uh, 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 class, we'll have reasons to give praise to your name. Thank you, dear Father, for we have prayed with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are still looking at the evolution, revolution, and devolution of grace. This is part E of this um, grace series. We've been looking at grace as it appeared to men in the Bible days so that we can as well um, desire that appearance or create atmosphere for that appearance or for those of us unto whom grace has appeared, we may deploy it the way the saints of old deployed it. Today we are going to, um, if you go to slide number two, you will see our content, the table of content. We have the golden text, we have the foreword, we have from panic mode to peace mode, and then standing against lack and poverty. Those are the four key issues that we're going to look at. And if you come to slide number three, you will see the Bible reading and the golden text. I will quickly read through the passages uh, selected for this study. Acts chapter 2, verses 44 to 47, and then Acts chapter 4, verses 31 to 37. So I'm going to read 44 to 47 of the book of, of, the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 2. And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness, and singleness of heart, 
praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. I'll go to Acts chapter 4, verses 31 to 37. Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 4, verses 31 to 37. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that out of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of land, lands or houses, sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold. Verse 35. And laid them down at the apostles' feet and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. May the Lord bless this world in our hearts in the name of Jesus. I may not be able to pick each verse one after the other, but I am trusting the Lord that as we check through the golden text, and the forward, we will be able to get to that point where I might highlight some of the verses that I have just read. But let me read the golden text. It is right there on slide number three. And we're looking at Acts um, 4.32. No, Act 2.32, 4.32, and then um, Act chapter 4, 35 to 30, 34 to 35. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things common. Now let me read these verses, 34, 35. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. 
May the Lord bless this word in our hearts in the name of Jesus. I would like to um, tell you that this story or these passages that I read to you happened at the very early of the church. It was shortly. In fact, chapter 2 was that part of chapter 2 that I read was an immediate follow-up of the experience that the, the disciples had on the day of Pentecost. Having been filled with the Holy Spirit and Peter in the bid of explaining to those who are confused who came around hearing the noise, hearing the prophecy, hearing the presence of God in different tongues, he needed to tell them that they were not drunk of wine, they were simply drunk of the true vine. And that it was the Spirit of God as prophesied by Joel that came upon them and that's why they were all speaking in tongues. Each time I think about Peter, Paul, and all the rest of them. I just could not but thank God for their lives and their understanding of the scriptures. And I hope you know that they don't have the New Testament that I read now. They had the Old Testament and they preached Christ. They preached the gospel successfully and much more powerfully uh, from the Old Testament. He was able to convince the people that it was the Spirit of God as promised by the mouth of Joel that came upon them. And about 3,000 souls were added to them that day. They got them baptized and then they started to grow. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in, in, in prayer, in fellowship, and in breaking of bread. Now, and the church was growing, and the aftermath, the after effect of what we read, uh, or what I just told you, is what we are seeing here. And I will trust God as we continue to bring us into such a point where we might see how grace was devolved. The devolution of grace, the distribution of grace among the people and that it is quite, quite um, interesting to me to see how those spiritual these people were and yet they never neglected the physical needs of the people. And they went uh, so far to meet the needs of the members of the pride, permits me, of their company. They were not only um, addressing issues in prayer to save one of them or two of them or some of them who were threatened by death or threatened by the powers that be. And they lifted up their voice to pray as we saw about Peter and John. It's interesting that even those who are in need, who lacked money, who lacked food, uh, they also join hands together to attack poverty and lack and hunger in the lives of the people, not with prayer, but by ministering to the needs of the people. And this is quite challenging for me. And I am praying that God will bring us to that point in our time that we may walk the way the saints of old walked. We pray about uh, almost everything. And it's not wrong to pray about everything. All right? But where they needed to pray, they prayed. 
But where they needed to pay, they paid. Two different things. They never mixed or exchanged prayer for payment. And they never exchanged payment for prayer. Where they need to pray, they prayed. Where they need to pay, they paid. And we must understand this. That this is part of what grace does in the lives of believers. And I want to ask you to come along as we study the word of God together. That we may understand that if we are going to be as strong as those men and our leaders may preach the word of God with all boldness and there will be no distraction on their path. This we must look at very seriously and walk in. All right, so let me invite you to slide number four. As we look at the foreword, just about three paragraphs, um, just for us to introduce this. The mode of life and operation of the disciples needed to change from being sheep before the death of Jesus to lion after the death and resurrection of Jesus. Though sheep could flock and graze together, they are not known to fend for or defend one another. They do not even have any known territory, let alone defend it. Excuse me. <clears throat> I have been wondering why the transition, if you don't mind, from sheep to lion. I love the nature of sheep and I love that picture that it brings to my mind. Simple, teachable, gentle, and all of that. Leadable. Pliable. That's the sheep. So why did Jesus permit this world transited from the Lamb of God to the Lion of the tribe of Judah? Which, I believe, informed our own transition from being sheep sent into the midst of wolves to lions even in the midst of wolves. I realize that sheep could flock together. They could graze together. But they have not been known to fend for one another. If you attack one of them, all others will run away. They will not turn to say, who are you? Why do it that? No, they will just scatter. They don't, if you hold, even if you hold the calf of one of them, or the lamb, it will only bleat. The mother will only bleat. It can, it can follow you for a while. If you, if you threaten that particular sheep, he leaves you alone. It could be bleating and be crying, but that's all. You can't do that to a dog. In fact, common local fowl, you can't try it. Except you are well known to that bird. It will fight back. So sheep are not known to fend for themselves. Sheep are not known to defend others or members of their flock. And I observe also that they don't defend their territory. If you bring another sheep now to where these other sheep are, it doesn't make any difference. They just, they, just, they just look at that one for a little while. And after two, three minutes, they start to flock together. Very simple-hearted animals. 
So there is no territory to defend. They don't understand what is even called territory. Now, the question is, will Jesus leave us in that format? Will Jesus leave us with that kind of sense that does not define territory and we don't know our boundaries when actually part of the instruction of the scripture is that we must not move the ancient landmark set by the fathers. Sheep don't understand all of that. But lion understand territory. They understand territorial integrity and they can defend it. Lion can fend for one another and lion can defend each other. So I am saying this because I want to quickly establish why that transition became very necessary from sheep to lion. Okay? So I will take the next paragraph. I'm still on slide number four. Jesus gave the disciples a stern warning to be careful when he sent them as sheep among wolves. And I'm sure you remember that passage in Matthew chapter number 10. In, in, in Matthew 10 verse 16, we have that, that, that instruction, very firm instruction that Jesus gave to the disciples. And I like to read um, from King James translation. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpent and harmless as dove. Sadly, even after the resurrection of Jesus, the sheep-like nature and mentality lingered with the disciples for a little while because they did not know, realize, or perhaps believe the transformation that took place by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. As we're going to see very shortly, I observe that this sheep-like nature, which Jesus implied in this verse 16 of Matthew chapter 10. And I know you remember that one of the passages we read in the previous uh, study showed to us Jesus saying to them, do not go to the ways of the Gentiles. And do not enter into any of the cities of the Samaritans. But rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now because he was sending them as sheep. He told them where not to go. He controlled and curtailed their movement. Alright. And I realized that. That nature. And that mentality. Of being sheep. Lingered with the disciples even after the resurrection of Jesus when he had become the lion of the tribe of Judah. They were still operating as sheep. They did not understand or they did not realize or perhaps they never believed the transformation that had taken place in their lives by the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. Again, I'd like to remind you that Jesus died as the Lamb of God, but he rose as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. The two natures are different. So the oppressions will be different. The way of life will be different. Perspective will be different. Approaches will be different. Responses will be different. These are realities that must dawn on us, even to us, unto whom the end of the world has come. Let me read, so that we can enter into the study itself. Why there is nothing wrong in being sheep of Jesus, we cannot continue as sheep when our master has changed 
from being lamb of God or being the lamb of God to the lion of the tribe of Judah. So I move to slide number five now, from panic mode to peace mode. The Bible remarked that the disciples met behind shut, not closed doors, for fear of the Jews, the wolves, even after the resurrection of Jesus. I believe you know that to close the door is different from to shut the door. When you close the door, anybody can just go get there and just press the handle and the door opens. But when you shut the door, you lock it. That's what it means. And look at this John chapter 20 verse 19. It's there on the slide. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. These men were not cults or cultists. But why they assembled together, and I want you to, um, to, to take note of that word assemble, assemble. It's, it's, it's important that you take note of it. Assemble, the assembly of the believers, the pride of the lions. When they were assembled together, they shut the door. I hope you know or remember that on the day of Pentecost also, they were assembled together. In fact, they have been there for 10 days in the upper room. And when the Holy Ghost eventually came and they began to speak in tongues, those who came did not have to knock the door before they entered into the place where the apostles and all the disciples were, which showed that the doors were not shut. But on this occasion, they shut the door. I am very, I am also thinking that they must have shut the windows because of the fear of the Jews. Now, when he said, I send you as sheep into the midst of the wolves, and he was saying, don't go to the Samaritan, don't go to the Gentiles. He sent them to the Jews. These are the men he referred to as wolves. And the way they killed Jesus tells me that they were wolves. Dangerous predators. Dangerous predators. Now, the, the question that formed in my mind is, why were they afraid after the resurrection? Why did they have to shut the doors and shut them in, possibly shut Jesus out? You know Jesus had to enter into that place without opening the door. I don't want to go there because it's not, it's not important. The doors were shut. And the doors were shut because of the fear of the Jews. And when Jesus stood in the midst, in the middle, he said unto them, Peace be unto you. Now, I know that that may be a salutation. That may be the way of greeting. And we use that a lot as Christians. In fact, I grew up knowing that that is how Christian greet each other. It was just common in those days. It's no longer as common now, but that's the greeting. That's the greeting. Allah fear for you. Allah fear for you. You know, my parents and my brethren, they spoke Yoruba, not English the way I am talking, speaking English now. It's Yoruba. And that's everywhere. And so we grew up to know that. And up till now, 
when I visit people, I still pronounce it. Because that's, that's the way we are brought up. All right? But was this just a greeting? Was this just a mere salutation? Yes, it is salutation. And I hope you remember that when Gabriel saluted Mary, Hail, thou that are highly favored. Now, Mary was wondering in her mind, what manner of salutation could this be? Again, we need to check what manner of salutation could this that Jesus brought to these people who are afraid. And I know you know that the man that is afraid is peaceless. And Jesus said, peace be unto you. How will peace be unto them? And will there be, will there be any reason for them to have peace? What will bring peace? Which peace? When the master has been slaughtered. Which peace? When they are still breathing threatenings and slaughter against them. Which peace could Jesus be talking about here? Can I just, can I just go to slide number six? So that we can, we can spread it a little and then trust the Lord within the ambit of time that we have. Take us to a point where we could pray. No one should say the fear of the disciples were, was unfounded or unnecessary. It was. If they thought the religious leaders were joking, now, by the death of Jesus, they knew they were not. However, the same Jesus who was crucified, as though helplessly, came and announced, Peace be unto you. I agree that he is the best person and the only person to pronounce this. Peace be unto you. It was the reason for the affair. It was his death that brought fear to their heart. They knew that he was an endangered species because they knew that they'd been looking for him to kill, to stone to death. But this was the height of it. He was seriously battered. In fact, looking at the word of God, the word of God from the mouth of Isaiah, he had no comeliness that any man would desire him. He was everywhere was battered. There was no beauty left in him. Scorched on the back, in the front, everywhere. Laceration everywhere. That could have introduced great fear. I wonder if I was among them, whether I would even be part of that meeting. I would have traveled somewhere far away because of fear. But Jesus came and said, peace be unto you. What's the basis of this? What manner of peace could this be? And how would they have this peace? And I know that you may have reason to be afraid. Maybe loss of a loved one. Maybe loss of fund. Maybe loss of job. Maybe loss of something very valuable. And already you are in a panic mode. You are afraid. You are going to lose even your accommodation because you've lost your job. And there's no way you can raise money to pay your house rent. So many things could be threatening you. Bank could be threatening you. All kinds could be threatening you. That you are not even interested in meeting with people. You have shut yourself in, locked the door. Because anybody who knocks on your door has come to ask for money. And you don't want to talk to anybody. Now, I want to say to you, peace be unto you. That's the first thing I'd like to say to you. May the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding flood your heart. But let's look at the word of God together. Let's check what Jesus is bringing to the table so that 
we can enjoy it together. Can I read further? I'm on paragraph two, slide number six. How can peace be unto sheep amid ravenous wolves? Who will accept such a salutation in the context of the prevailing situation? Was Jesus joking or merely trying to comfort them? How do you tell a sheep captured by wolves or in the midst of wolves and say, peace be unto you? I have seen a lion that captured um, a small antelope and was playing with it. Yeah, even though he's playing with that antelope, but that antelope knows that this play, no be correct play. It cannot be correct play. This cannot be correct play. So I see the antelope shivering because he knows. He knows by virtue of this person that is the nature of this person. He is not playing. He is just relaxed that he has captured. This is good for lunch. And there is no doubt about it. That animal will end up in the stomach of that, that lion. How do you tell a sheep surrounded by wolves? Peace be unto you. What peace? How will he have peace? Even if you appear peaceful on the outside, you won't appear peaceful on the inside. And I know that the realities around you suggest that you should be panicky. You should be worried. You should have anxiety. In fact, it should disturb people around you if they don't see you being anxious, being worried, being troubled, and being disturbed. They are likely going to ask you, what is it that is making you to smile with these kind of things around you? Maybe you are also telling yourself, even when you hear good news or something good happen, suddenly you wish it doesn't happen because there is no reason for you to celebrate it because you have so much trouble on your head. Now, can I read further? So that we may find a place where we can pray today. Oh God, please help us, help us, help us, help us. I, 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 the truth is that Jesus did not bring this salutation to comfort them. It was to confront them with the new status or new reality. Peace be unto them because they were no longer sheep amid wolves, but lions amid wolves. Look, there is nowhere it was suggested that the wolves transited into sheep. They remain as wolves. But there is enough reason for me to think that there is a transition from sheep to lion. Lion belong to the big cat family. And I know that wolves are also predators. But I know very well that wolves cannot be passing. And lions are lying down, sleeping, and enjoying a siesta. And they will see a pack of wolves passing, and they will panic. The wolves will not even want to come there. They will be passing with carefulness, because they know that if they misbehave, something else will happen to them. And that is the truth. But if it is just a lonely lion, a solitary lion, 
and the pack of wolves are passing, he must pray that they will not see that lion because they can attack that lion and kill that lion, except that lion receive help from members of his pride. And I want you to know that Jesus did not just salute them, even though it was a salutation. Jesus did not just comfort them, even though it was a comfort. Jesus came to confront them with the new status, the new reality. You are no longer sheep that should be afraid of the wolves. You have become lions that should have peace in the midst of wolves. And I want to say to you, whatever be the dimension of trouble that is facing you or that has been facing you, by virtue of this new status, you are rising above it. The Lord is giving you a solution. Don't be afraid. It may look enormous, but no matter how big the elephant is, it cannot be a threat to the pride of lions. No. If that elephant is not careful, it will become the launch for the pride of lion. In fact, if it should pass when the lion are really hungry, it will eventually, because they will swarm around him, and eventually they will bring that massive object. They will bring it down. That is the truth. Whatever it is that is confronting you, it could be sickness in the body, it could be threat of death, it could be threat of sanction, it could be threat of financial crisis. I am saying today that peace be unto you. That thing will bow at your feet because it has no reason to threaten you. You are far above it. You are not a sheep that could be preyed upon. You are a lion, the king of the jungle. No matter how thick a forest is, it can never be a threat to the pride of lion. How do I say that in English? That it will be dusk, it will be dark, and snake will not move around. It is the rat that should be careful, not, not the snake. Eh? Yeah, you see Yoruba, 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 uh, Yoruba is beautiful. Yoruba says, Okandano, Sebin Fawo, Oni ki a ke ke ko lo do ko lo pa, Oni ki ni ka ta un, ki ni ota. That, how do I say that in English? I don't know. <laughs> the python is cooking. The cobra is washing plates. And they now ask scorpion to go and fetch water from the river. And the scorpion said, something will sting me. I can't. What will sting the scorpion? When the, the python is there, the cobra is there. If they should follow him, himself, the scorpion himself is a terrible stinger. I just want you to know that you have no reason to be afraid. The Lord has not only proved himself to be the lion of the tribe of Judah, the victorious lion. You yourself, you have become the young lion after the order of the lion of the tribe of Judah. So be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. All other animals, they must pay respect. They must pay respect to the lion. No matter how terrible they are, they must pay respect to the lion. He is the king of the jungle. Let me, let me take slide number seven. Let me just hope we'll be able to push this to a point. I'm still on from panic mode to peace mode. Lions, in their pride, will not be afraid 
or lose their sleep because of wolves. A pack of wolves can threaten a solitary lion, but not a pride of lions. If they come in their pack, look, even if the, even if the, the pride is still a young pride, maybe two, no, maybe one female, maybe one male and three females and cubs, they dare not come near. They dare not come near. One of them will become the lunch for the day. They won't even try it. Once lion becomes two, they won't try it. They will, if it is one, they may surround the lion and begin to attack. They may not succeed, except the lion is an old lion that is no longer um, active, that is completely old and ready to die. Otherwise, they would rather pay the, 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 the price for trying to arouse sleeping lions. Can I just read further? The disciples needed to change from panic mode to peace mode. Why do we still feel insecure with and among other Christians? The persistent fear of the wolves around us shows that something is wrong, either with our identity or for not being part of any pride. Even though I'm not sure I have that luxury of time, but I want to say to you that while we talk about the disciples, they finished their race. We are here. And one day we also finish our races. But I'd like to say to you that there is a need for you also to change from panic mode to peace mode. But if fear persists in your heart, if fear persists in my heart, yet in the midst of the brethren, then something must be wrong somewhere. It is either I don't know that I'm a lion and others don't know that they are, or I do not belong to a pride, that is, a group of lions. All of this, again, is to re-emphasize the need for you to belong to a group of believers, a church, a discipleship a, a, a group of fellowship. You need others as much as others need you. You cannot travel this path alone. And I want to repeat what I said a few weeks ago, that none of us has enough grace to confront all the challenges that we are going to face in life. I need to tap into your grace. You need to tap into my grace to confront this matter, confronting you. And we are going to see, when we start to look at the book of Acts, how the people, the brethren of old, tackled poverty in the midst of the brethren. So much so that there was none of them who lacked. Today we have poor people amidst us. It's all right. I know that there are people who are lazy who want to take advantage of others. I'm not talking about that. But why will a brother need assistance? And there are brothers, other brothers and sisters that will assist that person and they will abandon him or her. No, 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 no. I tell you, no. That's not how lions behave. No, no. They won't say because you are weak and you cannot hunt. If they hunt, 
they will make sure they don't take out of the out of the meat no no if you have appetite to eat even though you can't hunt you will eat as much as you should eat that is the essence of belonging to the pride that is the pride of the pride that is the price of the of the pride P-R-I-Z-E, not C-E. Price, not price. I want you to know that God who called us into this fold, he called us because he knows we are going to need one another. So why separating yourself? Why are you a lone ranger? Why don't you like to fellowship with other Christians? Why are you thinking you are holier than others? Why? Why are you looking for fault in other Christians? Why are you not at peace with other Christians? Now, the truth of the matter is that life will make you, will render you poor. That life will make you vulnerable. That life will make the enemy to prey on you. And it's not going to pay you is not going to pay the body of Christ. Sadly. That's the sad truth. Can I read? Still on slide number seven. I know that time is not there. I will just pause here. And when we come back, by God's grace, next class, we'll be looking at standing against lack and poverty. It's also a wolf that we must conquer. In fact, the economic realities of the day now suggest that we must combat this, this wolf and we must finish this wolf, never to threaten any of the brethren again. Let me read this last paragraph. Moreover, we have reasons to panic as sheep operating amid wolves. However, our status changed at the resurrection we are now lions after the order of the lion of the tribe of judah let me read matthew chapter number 28 and i will just read verses 18 and 19 and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, what I am dealing with first and foremost is the need for you to change from panic mode to peace mode. Even if the solution is not yet here, can you allow peace to be in your heart? Because all of these things threatening you, can't handle you. Your status changed when Christ rose from the dead. You are no longer a prey that the enemy can prey on. You are no longer the sheep that wolves will just take and eat and take for lunch. No, it's no longer like that. Oh. Things have changed. God has come to change, transform your nature from being sheep to being lion. And I want that to sink into your spirit. When the enemy comes and threatens you, tell the enemy that he dare not come closer. Especially now that you belong to a pride, a family of lions. Interestingly, in the, in the pride of a lion, you find the cubs, the young lions are there. It's not possible for one animal to come and pick one of the cubs. 
It's not possible. Which animal will try that? Which animal? When the male lion is there and the female lions are there, it's not possible. Look, it's not possible that the devil will just come and snatch a brother away from us. It's not possible. It's not done. The Bible taught me that those who are strong should bear the burden of the weak. That's what the Bible teaches. And that is what the brethren of old practice. And that is what we must practice. They don't criticize a man because he's weak. They know he belongs to the pride and they must protect. And even though he has no capacity to hunt like them, he will not be hungry. So men, as we are going to see next week, sold their land, sold their houses, and brought the money to the feet of the apostles. And distribution, devolution, was done based on their needs, not on their status. So even if you are the least in the pride, and you need 50 million, and Peter, the big brother, is also in that pride, and he needs 50,000. They won't say because Peter is an arch apostle, he should take 50 million. No, that small brother at that corner who needs 50 million will be given 50 million according to their needs. When a pride takes down an animal, they don't dictate to you what you should eat or which part to eat. You eat based on your capacity, desire, and appetite not based on your own physical capacity to hunt. Brother, the fact that a brother does not have a job does not mean he should be homeless. When we have brethren, because he doesn't have a job does not mean he should be hungry and he cannot feed well when there are brethren around. It is unacceptable. If we understand what Christ has come to do in us, this is how to live. We cannot look at a member of the pride and we allow the enemy to rubbish him because he's disadvantaged in one area of life. No, 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 no. We should all rally around and protect him and make him feel that he is a member of this family and that he can stand against the enemy anytime not because he has capacity to fight, but because he has brethren to fight on his behalf. If you belong to such a pride that is not the pride of Christ, I'd like you to please check it well. If those who are members of the pride are attacking you, something is wrong somewhere. They may not be the lions after the, the lion of the tribe of Judah. This may be some other lion somewhere else. Not after the similitude of Christ. And I say that with all due respect. I will not ask you to change your church. But be wary of such group of people who are not portraying Christ. Who are behaving like wolves attacking, attacking you. No, they should protect you. They should not accuse you. They should intercede for you. And those men with ministry of the devil, ministry of the dragon, who are always accusing you, I don't think that's where you belong. I honestly don't think so. You should belong to that group that will lift up your problem before God and intercede on your behalf until help is deployed from heaven. I want you to bow your head. Now, permit me to tell you that without Christ, you are a prey. You are a prey. In fact, if you are a sheep and you have Christ, Christ is there as a shepherd to protect you. But you are not a Christian. You have not repented of your sin, confess and forsake it. Ah. You are not a sheep under a shepherd. You are just a straying goat somewhere. You are food for the wolves. And you know the terrible thing about wolves is that 
They don't even wait for the animal to die before they start to eat. Terrible. 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 I want you to pray. And I want you to repent of your sin and ask Jesus to forgive you. And if you are there, you are in a panic mode. I have just announced to you, peace be unto you. Your own prayer is that, Lord, as my status changed from being sheep to being lion, let the mode also change from being panic to having peace. Peace in my mind. Peace over my marriage. Peace over my business. Peace over my finances. Peace over my health. Peace over my children. Peace over my ministry. Peace over my education. Peace everywhere. Because that's the first thing that Jesus deserved. Peace be unto you. Before you will say anything, peace. We're going to talk about many things, but this matter is a matter for me. No progress is made in an atmosphere where there is no peace. You can't think well when there is no peace. You can't make any appreciable, you can't, no growth, no development when there is no peace. And I want you to pray. Say, Lord, let your peace come into my mind. And for those who want to give their life to Christ, I want to say to you that Christ is our peace. You can't have peace without Christ. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the one who has settled the quarrel between us and God. He is the one that has made peace on our behalf with God. And you can latch upon that by confessing your sin, by repenting of your sin, and by forsaking that sin and asking the blood that was shed to come and cleanse you. I want you to pray very quickly because I must pray now. We've exceeded our time by few, 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 one or two minutes. We would like to bring this prayer point to a close. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Lord, first I pray for those who are repenting, confessing, and forsaking their sins, that, Lord, you will truly forgive them and cleanse them in the name of Jesus. You will make peace with them, and you will cause your peace to flood their heart in righteousness right now in the name of Jesus. And for those who have been worried, who are full of anxiety and fear, even fear of the unknown, threat here and there, pressure here and there, and they're almost giving in. They're almost caving in. Lord, I have spoken peace to them. I ask that your peace will flood their heart in the name of Jesus. Apart from the fact that their status have changed spiritually. And I want their status to change physically in the name of Jesus. Lord, you will send help to those who need help. You will send form to those who need form. You will send healing to those who need healing. You will send a, 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 a grace to those who need grace. And for those who need promotion now, you will send promotion unto them. Those who are looking unto you for the fruit of the womb. Lord God, will you please release it now unto them in the name of Jesus. And let your name be glorified. Thank you, dear Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you so very much for being part of this class. I want to say to you that same time, Next week, we are going to have the second part of this, when we'll be talking about um, a, a standing against lack and poverty. And I want to remind you of our women's conference. It's coming up on the 17th and 18th of May at Graceland Camp, Egbawode. The theme of that meeting is Women with Spies. You really, really need to be in that meeting. If you are... Um, a single sister or married or a widow, divorcee, single mother. Once you're a woman, please come. University, polytechnic, colleges of education, working class, top flight um, women, career women, professionals, please come. God wants to have a time with you. 
registration shall be free, accommodation shall be free, feeding shall be free. By Friday, 6 o'clock will have started on the 17th. And by 4 o'clock on, on the 18th, we are done. And from Shagami Interchange to that camp, it's about 15 minutes drive. So come from Abekuta, come from Ibadan, come from Lagos, come from Shagamon, come from Ijebude, come from Indonesia, come from Ore, come from Benin City. You can come from Asaba. It's not too far. It's going to be live streamed though, but it will be so wonderful for us to come there and listen to God speak to us, women with spies. The Lord bless you.